You're about to see the creation of an end-to-end -end application foundation. We'll start with a backend, including a database, an API, and a back office web UI. The API will then be published on the CA API gateway, where mobile app services are deployed. Finally, you'll see how an app is created in Xcode. This app interacts with mobile app services and consumes this API securely to complete the end-to-end -end loop. Step 1 involves creating the actual API backend in CA Live API Creator. Let's start a new project in Live API Creator. We want to start from scratch, so we select an empty database. We give it a name. A description and save. Then we switch to author mode and start defining our application's data model. In this mode, we create tables and fields. For example, let's define the concept of suppliers and add a few fields to it. Back in our schema view, we can see the data model we started. We can also import a data model from a simple JSON file. Let's do that for the rest of the data model. You see, we end up with two other data formats for product detail and product location. Now let's start adding some application logic. We create a couple of reactive rules around the concept of product quantities. In our case, we want total units in stock to automatically be summed up from all children product location bins. The second rule is going to be a validation rule using JavaScript. This rule prevents the total units in stock to go beyond a maximum value. Any action affecting the total units in stock will trigger this validation rule. This makes sure we're not stocking too much of a particular product. If we switch to REST Lab, we can see that an API has automatically been created for this data model. We can use this API to easily populate sample data in the application backend. I have sample data in JSON here that I'll copy from a file and paste into REST Lab. I'm doing this once for product details and again for product locations. In addition to this automatic API, we also get a single page application back office UI called Data Explorer. From Data Explorer, we can now see the data that was loaded via the API. I can edit the data directly from here. For example, I can change the units in stock for a specific bin location. You notice that the reactive rule automatically updates the total units in stock. If I change the value to go beyond our max units in stock, you'll see our second rule kick in automatically and an error popping up. Although Live API Creator automatically generated an API for our app, let's create our own REST resource tailored to our client application. This is known as a custom resource or a microservice. Let's call this new resource Available Product. We select which field we want to include in here, and we can also tailor how some of these attributes are named. Resources have filters. In this case, I only want to return products where total units in stock are greater than zero or ones that are allowed to be backordered. Now, I also want to include data about the product location bins nested in product details. I do that by adding a level to my resource. The correct relationship is suggested. I adjust the name to appear in my resource. Another filter so that empty bins are not returned, and under Attributes, which fields should be returned. Clicking Test brings me back to REST Lab, where I can test my new resource. You can see all fields are named as desired, and an added checksum field, which enables an important feature called optimistic locking. This makes it scale. 
Also, notice pagination is automatically handled. If we go to API Docs, you will notice that a standard Swagger doc was created and updated as we created our backend. In the second step, we publish the newly created API to the gateway responsible for securing the API traffic and authenticating users. This gateway implements the OAuth protocol, allowing users to authenticate to an internal IDP or a social login provider like Facebook. The policy templates are ready on the gateway. All I need to do is tell the gateway to add this API at the wanted address. We do this using a simple script, and we're done. We are now ready to start developing our mobile app. In this step, you will see how a mobile app developer registers the application in Mobile App Services and builds the app in Xcode. First, the developer logs into the Mobile App Services Developer Console. Then, the developer registers the app, naming the app, the organization, and click the Create button. Since we're developing an iOS app, we'll choose this platform. Mobile App Services provides a convenient iOS app template to be added to Xcode. Let's download that. We can also download the iOS framework, which abstracts out all the security aspects of this app. We can now view our newly registered app in the Developer Console. You can see that a client ID has been created for this app. Also, you can download the iOS config file containing this key and other important information needed for the app to call our secure API. We're now ready to start coding our app. Let's start by choosing the app template downloaded earlier and name our application. Under Capabilities, let's turn on Keychain Sharing to allow mobile SSO between this app and any other app we're creating. CA's mobile SSO technology optimizes UX in a secure way. Next, we import the Mobile App Services SDK and config file downloaded earlier. We will illustrate calling our secure API from the main view controller. We just need to declare a couple packages. We configure the app for a simple OAuth password grant type, but there are many different flows supported, each allowing for a slightly different UX. We're pretty much done here. Plugging a secure API call from Xcode at this point is very simple. The developer simply uses the getFrom method enters the API location, provides variables to catch response and potential errors. Normally, you would display parts of the response in the GUI as appropriate, but in this case, we'll simply print the API output in the debug console to demonstrate our end-to-end -end flow. That's it. Let's compile the app. We'll run the app in the iOS emulator on the right and show the output console centered at the bottom of the screen. Because location services are turned on, our app automatically asks the user for permission. Since we're running in an emulator, let's emulate our location. Since we added our secure API call in the main view, we're automatically prompted for authentication Notice how the developer did not have to write any code for this to happen. Users can choose which IDP to authenticate against. We'll use our internal IDP configured on the gateway side. The results of the API call coming from our backend are now showing in the output console. Let's review what we just accomplished in a few minutes here. We created our application backend on Live API Creator, published it to our gateway, associating security policies to it. Then, we created an app that calls this secure API, including user authentication. Of course, there is still work needed to complete the actual mobile application UI. And our backend might need to evolve as we add functionality, but we achieve our end-to-end -end secure flow in a matter of minutes.